Hello everyone, my name is Miruna Popescu, I'm a fourth year pathology resident and in this short video I would like to discuss with you a tricky situation which you will definitely encounter in your daily sign out if you get to do enough genital urinary pathology. So let's dive right in. What we have here is a TUR-BT specimen, that is a transurethral resection of bladder tumor, that's what the acronym stands for. Now, bladder biopsies and TUR-B specimens are usually obtained when any sort of mucosal abnormality, including non-invasive papillary as well as um, obviously invasive tumors, are identified at the time of cystoscopy. Of course, um, obtaining tissue in this matter can um, also and is also a part of surveillance protocols in identifying um, recurrences of bladder cancer. But going back to the um, specimen at hand, right, to our case. Now the most important histologic compartment or component that we as pathologists have to um, evaluate in these specimens is of course the urethelium. You might say seeing this area at least from, from the slide, well there's virtually no urethelium present um, I might just sign this out as inadequate sample repeats uh, biopsy. To which I would say, hold on, let's first look at what we have. So we do see lots of thin wall dilated blood vessels surrounded by some connective tissue. There may be some inflammation here and there. But what I would like you to notice is this sort of finger-like, almost papillary configuration of this highly vascularized fibro, fibrous connective tissue. And now let's, let's look in a, at an adjacent area on the same slide. Again, notice these slender, elongated, finger-like um, structures made up of connective tissue with blood vessels, with dilated blood vessels in it. Now see where I'm pointing at? Again, there's no urethelium. But actually, these structures represent naked papillary stalks. They are essentially what remains when the neoplastic urethelium covering these papillary fronts completely detaches from the, from the basement membrane, leaving behind denuded fibrovascular cores of a papillary urethelial neoplasm. Now, you, you cannot say what tumor type it is, you, you cannot say what it is, it can sit anywhere on the spectrum of papillary urethelial neoplasia from completely benign papilloma to the complete opposite end of the spectrum representing a high-grade papillary urethelial carcinoma. You simply cannot say. Nor can you grade it because we don't have any urethelium. But what, what you can confidently say is that this morphologic aspect is consistent with um, a papillary urethelial neoplasm. And the word neoplasm here is used exactly to highlight this kind of uncertainty regarding tumor type, grade, and everything. Now, denudation of the urethelium in papillary tumors is commonly, but not exclusively, seen in high-grade papillary urethelial carcinoma as a reflection of the general discohesiveness of these, of these high-grade cells. But as I said, this is not exclusive to um, high-grade papillary uh, urethelial carcinoma. It might also be seen in papillomas, panelinumps, and everything in between. Okay, now what can you do? You've established you, had na you have naked papillary stalks. First of all, you have to examine the entire slide. You have to examine all the slides that you have from, from the same patient, of course. You could perform levels um, if you have sufficient material, all in an effort to identify areas of intact papillary fronts, where, of course, if you have them, you can establish tumor type, grade, and everything. But if, um, if even after performing levels, examining the entire slide and everything, you still don't have any urethelium, intact urethelium, you may want to report this descriptively. 
And this is an example. They knew that fibrovascular cores consistent with or highly suspicious of a papillary urethral neoplasm. Now, very helpful in narrowing down the diagnosis, the diagnosis further is to suggest urine cytology. In some institutions, urine cytology is performed at the same time as tissue um, um, sampling, but in others it isn't. So suggesting urine cytology may help you to narrow down the diagnosis. Because um, think of this, where do those denuded neoplastic urethral cells go? They may be still swimming around in the urine, and urine cytology may be able to pick up on at least some of these neoplastic cells. Now, urine cytol although urine cytology is still lacking in its ability to distinguish between benign and low-grade lesions because of the similar cytological characteristics of the cells, um, it is, its diagnostic accuracy is much higher in identifying high-grade urethral carcinoma, and this has important therapeutic consequences. Now, in a urine cytology specimen, if you would be able to identify um, papillary structures lined by urethral cells that don't show those high-grade cytological features, you might be able to come with a diagnosis of low-grade papillary neoplasm. Again, neoplasm is a word that tries to suggest exactly that, that we cannot say exactly whether it's a papilloma, pan element P, or, or actually a low-grade papillary urethral carcinoma. Okay, so this is just like a general approach to um, such instances. Now, this is from the same case. This was an area adjacent to the ones that I showed you in the first images at the um, start of the video. So I hope you can appreciate here how if you were to completely ignore the urethelium, how you would be left with these um, finger-like papillary uh, projections, the structures of connective tissue with dilated fin wall vessels. And this was actually a case of um, papillary urethral neoplasm of low malignant potential or uh, pan element P. Right, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, like and subscribe, there are more, more to come. And if you would like to see more educational content for, uh, from me, um, I have a uh, pathology mega index inspired by Dr. Jared Garner, to whom I am very grateful for inspiring me to do all of this, actually. And um, I think pathology mega indices are a great way to learn and spread knowledge through the, through the use of social media. So if um, you want to see more, um, follow me on Twitter, check out this, this link. And uh, yeah, without further chit chat, I hope you liked it. Have a great day.